हेलो एवरीवन आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर जयेंद्र पटेल फ्रॉम मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट महात्मा गांधी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एंड रिसर्च सेंटर नवसारी दिस इज द लेक्चर नंबर एट एंड इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट राइट टू फ्रीडम व्हिच कम्स अंडर द फंडामेंटल राइट्स नाउ द राइट टू फ्रीडम इज कवर्ड अंडर आर्टिकल नंबर नाइनटीन टू आर्टिकल नंबर ट्वेंटी now let us go through all these articles in brief and then we will go in the deep so very first article which is article number 19 states that there is a protection of total six fundamental rights of freedom very first is the right to speech and expression second right to assembly third right to association fourth right to movement fifth is the right to residence and next is the right to have a profession so these are all rights that comes under the article number 19 the article number 20 deals with the protection with respect to conviction for offenses article number 21 deals with right to life and the personal liberty now there is an amendment and one more thing is added in the article number 21 which is known as article number 21a it deals with the elementary education which states that every person who is below 14 has the right to education and we are having article number 22 which shows the protection against the arrest and the detention in certain cases so let us start with the very first article which is article number 19 the right to have certain freedoms as we discussed we are having certain freedoms the very first freedom is the freedom to speech and the expression next is the freedom to assemble with no arms okay that means without any kind of weapon next is to freedom to form association unions or cooperative societies the next is the freedom to move freely throughout the territory of india no one can stop you in any territory of the india okay next is the freedom to have residence in any part of the territory of the india so you can settle or say you can reside in any part of the territory of the india now there was one more freedom which was basically omitted by the 44th amendment act and during this particular lecture i have this homework for you so this is a research homework okay just find out one more freedom that was removed by the 44th amendment act 44th amendment act okay there is one freedom which is removed in the 44th amendment and this is the homework for you just find it out and just post in the comment section or post in the group next is the freedom of having your profession okay so you can select any profession or you can carry to on any occupation or trade or the business within india okay now <laughs> as of now we are recording the lecture in the covid 19 situation so you may think that okay bhai we are not having freedom to assemble we are not having the freedom to move freely okay so if you are having this fundamental rights then why we are not having all these freedoms now currently certain freedoms are restricted because there was one order passed by the ministry of home affairs okay and this order was basically passed under the disaster management act so according to this order our certain freedoms are restricted by the indian government so let us continue towards the very first the freedom of speech and expression now it is a self explanatory freedom it states that the freedom of speech and the expression you can express anything you can say anything okay the state guarantees the freedom of speech and expression to every person of india okay 
but the state has the authority to impose the restrictions on the freedom of speech and expression in the interest of integrity security and the sovereignty of the country if you are speaking or expressing anything that may go against the maintaining the integrity security and the sovereignty of our country in that case you will be restricted secondly if it is against the public order then you will also get restricted next if your speech encourages any other person to commit any kind of crime then also you will be restricted and lastly if that speech or expression is contempt of court in that case you will be restricted now what do you mean by contempt agar aap court authorities ke sath wrong behavior karte ho ya fir willingly particular court ke order ko obey nahi karte ho in that case it will be known as the contempt of the court you have to maintain all these things otherwise your freedom of speech or say expression will be restricted the next is the freedom to assemble now the state guarantees every person the freedom to assemble peacefully without arms remember that peacefully without arms arms means weapons as i mentioned earlier the reasonable restrictions can be imposed in the interest of sovereignty and the integrity of the country and the public order remember that this statement will come each and everywhere it is subjected to these restrictions it must be peaceful and it should be harmonious and not threatening the safety of the peoples so the assembly must be peaceful and it must be unarmed and not threatening to the safety of the peoples now you may think that the people of sikh faiths wear and carry the kirpan okay now kirpan is basically a type of sword this is a weapon and they also gathers in the temples gurudwaras and the public places okay they carry these things isn't it now this particular thing includes the article number 25 okay which will be covered under the freedom of the religions okay so i will explain this thing under the article number 25 now as of now let us continue towards the next freedom which is the freedom of forming association union and the cooperative societies now this freedom gives worker the right to form the trade union which is thus the fundamental rights okay you can create your unions associations or say cooperative societies for the lawful purpose remember that for the lawful purpose not for any kind of illegal purpose every employee or say every workman gets the right to form their own trade unions now there are some exception okay some of the people cannot form their unions as i always tell you the state can impose the restrictions in the interest of everything i mentioned earlier in the freedoms if you are a person from the public service although he is the citizen of the india doesn't matter but he cannot claim this freedom for example any police personnel cannot create or form their trade union under the police force act okay there is a restriction of right over there in the police force act 1966 other than the police personnel or say public service people the constitution also allows parliament to pass the laws to restrict this right for political associations any member of the armed forces intelligence bureaus and personals employed in the telecommunication system so let us move towards the next freedom which is the freedom of movement a citizen of india can move freely throughout the territory of the india but this particular right can also be restricted on the ground of the security public order or for protecting the interest of the scheduled tribe also all the restrictions i mentioned in the previous articles also apply and there are some other restrictions like agar kisi personal pe criminal process chal rahi ho ya fir kisi kisi person ko conditional bail mili ho any kind of criminal person has a restriction or many times it happens that there are some minimum eligibility conditions available for any kind of place okay so to enter that place you must have some kind of eligibility ya fir many times it happens that 
many of the peoples are excluded to enter from any kind of public land or say premise now such things are done to basically for the national security consideration for example to control the borders and many times it happens that this kind of limitations are applied to limit the conduct of the public protest or say to regulate the access to the land based on the quarantine reasons now we will move towards the freedom of the residents now as i told you a citizen of india has the right to reside in any part of the country he can reside there he can settle there in the any part of the country in the same way it is subjected to reasonable restrictions imposed by the law in the interest of the general public or the protection of the interest of any scheduled tribes the next is the right to practice any profession so as an indian citizen we have the right to carry any trade or say any profession or say occupation in the territory of the india but provided that that particular occupation should not be illegal or say immoral that is against the moral duties also the law does not provide the state from making any law related to technical or say professional qualification requirements for any kind of practicing or say occupation or say trade okay yani ki agar aapko doctor ka profession start karna hai to minimum requirement should be there some qualification degrees are required so state can implement minimum qualification requirement for establishing any kind of profession or say occupation so once again let us revise all these freedoms that comes under the article number 19 very first one the freedom of speech and expression freedom to assemble freedom to form associations trade unions and cooperative societies fourth one is the freedom to move freely next is the freedom to residence and last one is the freedom of profession and remember this homework so now let us move towards our next article which is article number 20 now article number 20 is the protection with respect to conviction for offense now the conviction means the verdict that usually results when a court of law find any kind of guilty of a crime okay then and then it will be known as a conviction of offense now article number 20 deals with the protection of the citizen with respect to conviction of offense this provides total three types of protection of the individual against the states okay so this particular provision article number 20 is basically for us to protect us against the state so there are total three protection provided under this particular article the very first is the ex post facto law the second is the double jeopardy and the last one is the self incrimination so let us understand all these things the very first is the ex post facto law now this law comes under the article number 20 it says that one must not prosecuted and convicted in accordance with those laws which did not exist at the time of the commission of the offense by the accused and also must not be inflicted with punishments greater than those existing at the time of commission so as per this statement this particular provisions negates or say nullify the chances of retrospective implementation of the law regarding to the criminal offense okay let us understand this law in a simpler manner okay let me just give you an example let me say that there is a researcher available who is doing lots of researches and iska naam hai dr rohit mehra let me say iska naam hai dr rohit mehra aur uska ek colleague hai jiska naam hai let me say ke siddhant arya let me say dr arya okay sounds familiar right ओके okay, अब होता क्या है कि डॉक्टर रोहित की सारी की सारी रिसर्च सीक्रेटली डॉक्टर आर्या चोरी कर लेते हैं और अपने नाम से पब्लिश कर देते हैं सो दिस इज बेसिकली अ काइंड ऑफ क्राइम सो हमारे रोहित साहब आर्या साहब को 
कोर्ट में घस सकते हैं और कहते हैं कि एज पर द सिविल लॉस बिकॉज एट दैट टाइम लेट एस एज्यूम दैट के कोई भी टाइप का एक्स्ट्रा स्पेशल लॉज अवेलेबल नहीं है सो एज पर द सिविल लॉज इस क्रिमिनल पे कार्यवाही होनी चाहिए सो ऑल द ट्रायल्स है स्टार्टेड एज पर द सिविल लॉस नाउ मीन वाइल गवर्नमेंट डिसाइड टू कम विथ अ न्यू लॉ दैट इज लेट मी से कॉर्ड प्लेगियरिज्म एंड कॉपी राइट इंफ्रिजमेंट लॉ ओके दैट इज स्पेशली मेड फॉर सच काइंड ऑफ क्राइम्स नाउ अंडरस्टैंड वन थिंग एज पर द एक्स पोस्ट फैक्टो लॉ डॉक्टर आर्या कैन नॉट बी कवर्ड अंडर दिस लॉ एज ही हैज कमिटेड अ क्राइम बिफोर दिस लॉ कम्स इन टू पिक्चर ओके सो ये लॉ बाद में आया है और उससे पहले क्राइम कमिट किया हुआ है दैट्स वाई ही कैन नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड अंडर दिस लॉ ओके सो ऑल द प्रोसीडिंग्स विल बी कवर्ड अंडर नॉर्मल सिविल लॉज एंड जो भी पनिशमेंट्स मिलेगी वो भी इस पर्टिकुलर लॉ के हिसाब से ही मिलेगी क्लियर सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द एक्स पोस्ट फैक्टर लॉ नाउ लेट इज अंडरस्टैंड द नेक्स्ट लॉ विच इज नोन एज डबल जियो पार्टी नाउ वॉट डू मीन बाई जियो पार्टी जियो पार्टी मीन्स डेंजर ऑफ लॉस और हार्म और फेरियर नाउ इन दिस केस जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड दिस एज द पनिशमेंट सिंपल द कोर्ट पनिशमेंट Now over here, this term states that this is the double jio party. That means double punishment. Okay, so this particular law deals with the double punishment. It forbids a defendant. Who is a defendant? Defendant means जिसको हम criminal मान रहे हैं. Okay, for being tried twice for the same crime for the same set of facts. That means अगर किसी ने कोई crime किया है so he cannot be tried for two times okay or say he cannot be punished for two times for the same crime ek bar crime kiya hai to ek hi bar punishment milegi except if we are having some new facts the meaning is very simple a person cannot be convicted for the same offense more than once simple so this is known as double jeopardy the next is the self incrimination now it is a very simple one it implies that no person accused of an offense shall be compelled by the state to bear witness again himself so any state cannot create compulsion to be a witness again himself okay or say any state cannot create a compulsion to give the evidence against himself so these were the total three things that you need to remember under the article number 20 now let us move towards the article number 21 which is the right to life and personal liberty as per this article no person shall be deprived of his life or personal liberty by the state except as per the procedure established by the law now this article has a very wide scope and its interpretation has undergone many changes over the decades the right implies to each and every person who is right now in the territory of the india it is not about just a citizen of the india remember that the word life and the personal liberty have been interpreted in a very wide manner by the supreme court of the india and this is one of the most important right in one sense because without the right of life all other fundamental rights would be meaningless agar aapke paas life hi nahi hogi then baaki ke fundamental rights ko leke kya karoge isn't it let us quickly check out some of the extended meaning of this right as i told you this right has expansive meaning the word procedure established by the law has also gone the interpretation in a various manner to protect the life and the liberty and the dignity of an individual so basically there are various interpretation of this law like right to live with the dignity right to die with the dignity right to livelihood right to create your own environment right to have a social security and the protection of the family right to know or to be informed 
for anything and right against the telephone tapping. Now these are only few of them but the code has interpreted it in a various way. And there is also one more of them which is the right of elementary education. Elementary education. This has also come out from right to life. And we are having this elementary education as the article number 21A. So in the 86th constitutional amendment that happened in 2002, this article was introduced. It provides that the state shall provide free and compulsory education to the children between the age of 6 and 14. Okay, remember that the education should be free and compulsory and that's why we are having the right of education which is RTE. Okay, so this particular act is based on this article of our Indian constitution. So RTE basically requires all private schools to reserve 25% of seats to the children to be reimbursed by the state as the part of the public private partnership plan. The kids are admitted in the private schools based on the economic status or the caste based reservation. So this was all about the article number 21. Now let us move towards the article number 22. The article number 22 deals with the protection against the arrest and the detention in certain cases. The fundamental idea behind this right is to prevent the arbitrary arrest and the detention. Many times it happens that random arrest has been done and the detentions are done. Okay, so this particular article prevents all these things. Remember that this article is available for both the citizens of India as well as the non-citizens who are currently available in the India. Secondly, it safeguards for the individuals in case of the arrests and it comes into the picture after the person has been arrested. Now do not misunderstand it. Okay. It is not a fundamental right against the detention and the arrest. Okay. If you are doing any kind of illegal work or say if you have broken the law and there is a proof against it, in that case, you may get detained or you may get arrested. You will get only prevention whenever you are arbitrarily arrested. Okay. Or say randomly detained. Let us understand all the aspects of this article. So very first is the article number 22 first part. As per this article, no person who is arrested shall be detained in custody without being informed. To be informed is necessary. And secondly, on the ground of such kind of arrest, he cannot be denied to right to consult and to be defended by the legal practitioner of his choice. The next thing, the second part says that every person who is arrested and detained in the custody shall be produced before the nearest magistrate within a period of 24 hours for such arrest excluding the time necessary for the journey from the place of arrest to the court of the magistrate. Okay, so the time of 24 hour exclude the journey time and no such person shall be detained in the custody beyond the said time period without the authority of the magistrate. That means no person can be kept in the custody more than 24 hours without the permission and the authority of the magistrate. And remember that if such thing happens to you, in that case there are also some provisions available under the fundamental rights and we will discuss about those fundamentals in the third lecture. Okay, now let us continue in this article. Article number 22, the third part says that nothing in the clause 1 and 2, yani ki jo bhi cheez humne clause 1 or clause 2 mein discuss ki hai, will be applied to those two things. Ye jo do cheez hai, un mein apply nahi hogi. If any person who for the time being is an enemy alien, okay, if any person is enemy alien, in that case it will not be applied. And 
एनी पर्सन हु इज अरेस्टेड और डिटेन अंडर एनी लो प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर द प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन ओके नाउ इफ द पर्सन इज arrested or detained under the law that says preventive detention is necessary in that case this clause 1 and clause 2 will not be applied okay now there may be a question what do you mean by preventive detention there can be a two type of detention very first detention is the punitive detention punitive punitive and the second detention is the preventive detention that we are talking prevent punitive detention is the detention after the court trials yani ki court trials ke baad jo bhi detention hoga that will be the punitive detention and the preventive detention is before the court trials yani ki court trials hone se pehle aur say without having any kind of court trials if any detention happens or say if there is any provisions that says that the person should be detained that is known as preventive detention now the idea behind this preventive detention is basically to prevent an individual from committing any kind of crime okay agar hame pata hai ki ye particular person koi particular crime commit karne wala hai in that case he can go under the preventive detention this means that a person can detain on the ground of just suspicion only and the rights of the people arrested in this manners are governed by the preventive detention laws okay now i use one more word that is called trial trial okay yani court mein jo peshi hoti hai i am talking about all these things so basically it is also known as a court trial or say bench trial or say jury trial okay so it is basically when all the facts of the case are heard and judged or say jury make any kind of decision about this court case All these things are known as trials. Okay, court में जाने से लेके final decision होने तक जो भी चीजें होती हैं, they are known as trials. There are also further clauses available. We have just seen three basic clauses: Article number twenty-two, one, two, and three. There are also four, five, six, and seven clauses available. Under them, there are sub clauses available. But these are the three main points that we are going to cover during this subject. So this is the end of this session I hope you have understood what do you mean by right to freedom and all the articles that are available under the right to freedom let us just quickly revise all these articles so the very first article is the article number 19 which has the protection of the six rights what are those rights right to freedom of speech and expression second right to assembly third right to association next right to movement then right to residence and last one is the right to profession Article number twenty deals with the protection with respect to conviction of the offences, and हमने तीन अलग-अलग चीजें वहाँ पे पढ़ी. Article number twenty-one deals with the right of life and personal liberty. Twenty-one A is a subsection of the article number twenty-one, which contains the right to elementary education. And finally, we studied the article number twenty-two, protection against the arrest and the detention in certain cases.